What is up? My name is Matt Workman for Cinematography Database, and this is the Leica BLK360. Now, the majority of the film industry has probably never heard of this camera, and that is for two reasons. One, it is brand new. This is a very new piece of technology. And two, because it is a LiDAR sensor, and that is not something very common in the film industry yet. In this video, I'm going to talk a little bit about the technology behind this camera. We're going to be demoing it by scanning my new studio. Is that a first for YouTube? A LiDAR studio tour? I hope it's a first. That would be cool. And then we're going to be looking at the data together that this camera makes. And in the end, I'm going to talk about the applications for this type of technology, for the film industry, for virtual reality, and of course, for Cine Designer. And so I'm very excited to get into this tutorial demo review. To demo view? Is that a thing? So let's get right into it. Before we get into the LiDAR tech behind the BLK360, I thought it would be good to break down how a traditional photography camera captures an image. So I've set up a pretty typical uh, photography scene here, right? This is what most people's sets look like. We have our light source, our subject, our lens, and our camera. Picture one very, very small photon of light coming out of this light, hitting our subject, reflecting more or less off of it, and going through this lens and hitting the sensor. Now, the sensor actually doesn't know anything about the color of the light, really. It's mostly recording the brightness. So picture a lot of particles of light, a lot of photons from all over the place, but from this light primarily, hitting our subject, lots of them coming in here, focusing them through the lens onto a 2D plane. So with that in mind, let's look at the technology that's in a LiDAR sensor. So to help illustrate how LiDAR works, I'm going to bring in a tool that might be familiar to a lot of people in the film industry, and that is the electric tape measure or disto. And it has a little laser that's going to go out from here and shoot one photon of light at the subject. It's going to bounce off and come back. And because of the known speed of light, you're able to calculate and measure how far this is from the subject. With the BLK360, we have a similar laser technology going on, except that laser is going into a spinning mirror. So it's going to go out, hit the mirror, hit something in the distance, and it's going to get that measurement. And then this mirror is going to spin just a little bit, and that's going to give you the distance of the object just above that. And this mirror is going to spin in basically 360 so that you're going to get measurements in this axis here. And then at the same time, the whole thing is going to be spinning. There are a lot of measurements happening, and what you get is called a point cloud. And it sounds a little bit abstract, but think of it basically as a lot of measurements in 3D space. And similar to the photography sensor that is really only taking basically black and white brightness values, the LiDAR sensor is only taking distance values. So there's no color data inherent in LiDAR. It's only getting a distance. It's not getting any color information. And the way the BLK360 gets its color data onto the point cloud is by using the cameras that are located here. It spins around beforehand and creates a 360 photograph of the location. It then takes the color data from the photo and the depth data from the LiDAR sensor and puts them together. So you basically get a colored 360 point cloud of the space around you. So that is a quick look at the technology inside of the Leica BLK360. It's a mix of 360 photography and LiDAR, but enough talk. Let's see this thing in action and then look at some of the data. For the next part of the video, I'm going to switch to vlog mode so that we can walk around and I'm going to show you how to actually use this camera, set it up and get some scans out of it. So let's switch to that in three, two, Hello and welcome. So let's get up from the chair here. This is kind of a behind the scenes of how I record these videos as well. So to start, I'm actually going to turn on the house lights. And uh, as ugly as that's going to be because it's a mix of fluorescent and daylight. So we're going to have some like kind of like weird colors in the end. It is a little bit more realistic to probably how you would scan a location like this. So this is the BLK360 here in its carrying case. It's pretty awesome. And this is the battery that it takes. It looks like it's just normal, like, you know, lithium ion battery you'd use for a camera. And the first thing to notice is that this thing is very small. So compare it to like the size of my iPhone 6S here, 6S Plus, I think it is. It's one of the bigger iPhones. Um, this is a very small piece of kit. And even with its carrying case, this whole thing will easily fit in like your normal photography backpack. So if you look at the design of this, it's very simple. There's very little going on. You have the one button in the front here. We have the little LiDAR sensor with the mirror, the cameras, and we have our little battery compartment here, like that. And that's all there is to it. And so we're gonna turn it on here by pushing the button and letting it turn on. Great, so now that it's powered on, you'll see that it has a green ring here, and that means that it's ready to scan. And the simplest way to do this, to start a scan, all you have to do is push this button once, 
And the first thing it's gonna do is spin around and get kind of like a light meter reading of the room to understand how bright everything is. So that's what we're seeing it doing right now. It's spinning around, pretty cool. And then what it's gonna do is it's gonna start taking photos in every direction. Okay, so now it's done taking photos and now it's actually doing its LiDAR scanning. So you can see the mirror spinning really, really fast and it is taking a lot of measurements and spinning around at the same time. Cool, so that's it. We've done our first LiDAR scan together, congratulations. It's really easy, you turn it on, you hit the button, it takes pictures and then it scans. And we're on the low resolution now so it scanned it pretty quickly. I feel like that took like about a minute really fast and you can see that the status light is green again and if I wanted to make another scan I'd hit the button and it would do that again. Cool, so we did our first scan with what's called push button mode. It's the simplest way of operating it. Let's look at how you use the iPad for it. Basically when you turn this on it creates a wireless network and you log on to it like you would on any wireless network here and you're gonna open an app called Recap Mobile. It's made by Autodesk. Let's do search for scanners and it's gonna find the scanner that we're connected to. And what you're gonna do is hit new scan. And as you can see, that has activated the BLK360 over here. So you can do this remotely. Like I can be in the other room and trigger this to go. So those are the two ways of operating the BLK360. You can just set it up, hit the button, it scans, or you could connect to the app, control it remotely, and then also preview what's happening and what you're capturing. So the BLK comes with a tripod that I have over here. I had it in the background. Uh, it's pretty cool. It has a uh, proprietary mount that goes here. You can also get like a tripod adapter for it to put it on a beefier tripod. Pretty simple and you know once it's on there it has this like registering pin so it's not gonna um, not gonna come off easily. You could probably hang it upside down. I'm not gonna do that though. So now we're on the tripod so let's go pick our first scan location. This one will probably take maybe like four scans and we'll see um, what it looks like to register them together. Okay, so we are all set up and you can just grab this and walk around with it. It's very, very lightweight. And we're gonna start by scanning over there. I'm gonna start by putting it about there. And I'll kind of walk around this to show you what we're gonna scan. So it'll get the ceiling, all these walls, and then it'll see kind of into this distance. So I'm gonna go into the, the hallway over here. This should be fine. It can't see me. It's over there. So we should be all set here. Okay, so let's do our first scan, new scan. So there's the first photo it took. So right now it's clearly in photo mode. Okay, so now it's done scanning. You can see that it's saying transferring now. It's no longer scanning. So I can come back over here and we see that the status light is green. So the next place I wanna go is, I want this still to be able to see here where it was filming because this can't scan basically the footprint of the tripod. It can't see below itself. So when I'm picking my next station, I want to basically be able to see um, and to be able to fill in that hole just a little bit. That's that's my mentality with it. Different people do it differently. I'm thinking about going here, right? And when I put it here, it will be able to see where it was. So that's going to guarantee some overlap. And then it's also going to be able to see up these stairs and then move us into this next location. I'm going to hide over here. Don't want to get too far away because it doesn't need the wireless signal and I'm going to start a new scan. Okay, so while I'm over here hiding from the scanner and it's doing its second scan, I wanted to talk about really briefly about some of the things that LiDAR scanners do not like scanning. They don't like scanning them. One of those things is see-through objects like this, like this plastic bin. I left this here because when it scans it, it's gonna look a little bit weird. LiDAR scanners do not like things that are see-through or extremely reflective, and this happens to be both. I think like, here is pretty good because then this can still see where it was it can see over there now and it's starting to get this couch and a little bit more of this area so i'm gonna hide back in the stairs here because it can't see me and we're gonna start the next scan and as soon as i turned off the camera it finished registering so it says registered confirm results so let's click on that and what it's gonna say here is that it has a 45 percent overlap Balance is 50% and 100% points. And if you look at this little floor plan here, this is an overhead view that is generated. It shows you where it thinks the second scan was. And that looks pretty accurate, I would say. And you can say then merge scans. So I'm gonna merge it. I'm going to scan over there so it can see the back 
right? So I'll show you. I'm going to scan in here so we can see the back of this and get a little bit more of this room that it couldn't see. I'm going to scan from here and then it can see this back wall. Now this stuff is going to be a mess and I'm not, I'm not really here to capture this. I'm more about capturing the room and this stuff is in it. So those show you the different places that we scan. They're all aligned. We have some black area where it can't see behind the computer. It can't see the couch, but that's okay. I don't really care about that. All the walls though look really solid. And you can see that it even scans some of the exterior through the windows, which is kind of funny, but. Okay, we are done scanning now. So I'm gonna shut down the BLK360 and I'm gonna transfer from the iPad to the computer. And we're gonna look at what this looks like in post-production. Okay, so here is our point cloud loaded into Recap Pro. And we're looking at it from the outside, so it's not very interesting, but you can see the staircase got captured here with the door. So that's pretty cool, but let's actually go inside and see what this looks like. So and when you stop, it resolves. So everything that you're seeing in here is actually a data point or a, a, a distance. It's not actually like a mesh. Um, and then it actually merged the color as well. So we can kind of spin around here. We can see that it captured the stairs pretty well. Uh, it got okay over here with the door. And let's look at some of the things it didn't do well. So it doesn't like shiny black objects like this table. So that table just isn't there. It doesn't exist. Um, the tripod, the camera, we would have needed to have more scans to have that show up. It's possible. If you took a lot, a lot of scans, everything would show up great. But, you know, we're, we're on the clock here in most cases. So uh, things are going to fall by the wayside. But what it did really well, exceptionally well, is the floor, the walls, and the ceiling and the windows and the general um, important structures that are immovable in the space. I captured those really well. Here we are looking at the point cloud from the top. Here's the stairs. Our first scan was there. Here is the outside that it actually scanned and we don't care about that. So I'm gonna do what's called limit that out of the equation. And so this is a floor plan, but we're looking at the ceiling. You can see all the individual tiles. You can see where the lights are. You can see there's some speakers. That's where the column is. So this is all perfectly to scale and we can take measurements. If I take this top surface here, I can limit it by height and I can actually chop out the ceiling and then go back up to the top here. And we're looking at a generated floor plan. And again, this is all to scale. So um, I could use this as a floor plan in AutoCAD or I could export this and we can add measurements as well. And we can just chop away at this point cloud so we can make specific views. And I think a view like this is pretty cool. So these are some of the things that you can do with a raw point cloud. It's pretty cool, kind of fun to make a floor plan. We have what's called a side elevation here. And um, now we're gonna export this and make an actual 3D model out of it. Okay, now we are in Cinema 4D and I have converted that point cloud, oh, we're in a cabinet. I've converted the point cloud into a 3D model and I've pretty massively lowered its resolution so that it loads into Cinema 4D a little bit better. And right now we're just looking at a meshed model. This is about a million polygons, so uh, it's still kind of low resolution for something like this. And for the uninitiated, this might look like a really noisy and messy model, but this is all I really need for Cine Designer because this whole thing is to scale. And that's what's really important is that if I decide to clean this up and start to 3D model over it and add props and add Cine Designer and things to it, everything is to scale so the lighting will be accurate and the dimensions of this space will be preserved. So while this is not mighty impressive to some people, this is actually perfect for what I need it for. So for me, uh, the BLK has enough resolution and I've actually dumbed this resolution down this much so that it uh, goes quickly. We can see that, like I said, uh, this, a hot mess, but it doesn't matter because in most cases, I would delete that. I don't need any of that stuff. But uh, the doors look beautiful. They have the architecture, the, the molding, the trim, the color of the walls is there and the ceiling. That's kind of a complex thing. If I had to model that by hand, it would be kind of a pain in the butt. And again, all to scale. So let's come back and look at this. Oh, look at the hallway. Oh, we're in the closet. Uh, the hallway, oh, back in the closet. The hallway looks really nice up here. And so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna do a little bit of Cine Designer work with this and I'll come back and show you what that looks like. Okay, we are back. And what I did was essentially clean up this model. I took out the floor, cause that's not really necessary. I made the column simpler and I went and I deleted out a whole bunch of stuff and I added back some cleaner 3D models like the desk and the couch. And I deleted some of this stuff. And now I think it's a little bit more obvious why this stuff is so uh, valuable to me as a Cine Designer is that I can add 
people like this, and she does the 3D scan, and she's to scale, and then this dolly and camera that is Cine Designer. And these are all made to scale, they're to scale, and now this 3D model of this room, while basic, and a little bit messy, um, perfectly to scale. And we're actually now lighting this just like we would in the real world. So I've attempted to recreate the lighting of this space as well. So for instance, I can come up to here and I can turn off the windows. So this is kind of like what it would look like at night and vice versa. I can turn off all these overheads individually if I wanted or at once. And now this is daytime without any lights overhead. And if you're unfamiliar with Cine Designer, I can look through this camera, which is the one over there. Now I can work, work with this virtual camera uh, in this virtual space, but everything is being pretty much done uh, at scale here. So I'm going to try to frame up a shot. Let's probably time lapse through this. So I have a shot pretty much lined up here like I would want. I'm going to focus on the girl over there. And maybe I'll just spin her around. So we're playing with basically scale 3D people in a scale environment based on LiDAR, and they're based on photogrammetry. We have scale models of cameras and lights, and the lights are set up to behave like they would in the real world. So this is basically becoming the full Cine Designer workflow here. It's still technologically kind of um, advanced and not accessible to absolutely everyone, but I think this kind of data is going to be easier and easier to put together. And with Cine Designer, we've already put together a lot of the pieces of the puzzle necessary. So this is turning off the overhead lights and just working with the windows. And uh, I can start to turn on the overheads that are over here, which will be these two. And that would put some light coming from this side. And then I can just one by one add the overhead lights back in. And you'll see how that affects the scene. We could obviously bring in some... I'm going to switch this view. We could obviously bring in some movie lights and start to light that way. But this is a quick demo on how this kind of data from LiDAR can be used uh, inside of Cine Designer. And while this workflow looked maybe a little bit complicated, it's actually pretty easy. And I'll probably make a course on it uh, relatively soon for the people that are working at this level already. Uh, so this type of data uh, for rapidly and basically automatically creating 3D models to scale of locations, this is amazing. I can scan almost any location in this fashion with this workflow and bring it back into Cine Designer for pre-production. And that's how I plan on using this kind of data. And I don't think it's too much of a stretch that you can then clean this data up and then load it into a game engine, use it for virtual reality, use it for augmented reality. Um, it's pretty much limitless what you can do with this. And while the LiDAR data itself meshes into kind of a noisy model, even though this is very low res, uh, it's a little bit nicer looking than this, you then have an amazing base to then start doing traditional 3D modeling and making sure that everything's to scale. You have the colors and it is pretty incredible. So I'm going to cut the video here. We're going to be doing more videos on the BLK360. I've scanned a couple other locations. I have videos about those. I am definitely looking to buy the BLK360 as soon as I can afford it. And thanks so much for watching. If you have any questions about it, definitely leave uh, them in the comments below. I will be making sure to come in and check those out. Uh, thanks so much for watching. If you're interested in learning more about Cine Designer and this type of new workflow with LiDAR and 3D and GPU rendering, uh, make sure to subscribe to this channel. I will see you guys on the next one. Thanks so much for watching.